This game from the Tata Steel Challengers Tournament really caught my eye. So we've got Divya Deshmukh, 18 years old, international master from India, playing against Jaime Santos Latasa from Spain. Divya did not have an easy time in the tournament. Um, she scored four and a half in the end, but she actually gained rating points. She was one of the lowest rated in the tournament. And she did play some excellent chess, including this game. So let's take a look. D4. And it goes into a Nimzo Indian. So already we're guaranteed imbalance and dynamic play. And this is the main line. And the old way of playing this was just to play knight f3. Super solid knight f3 and then c5 and so on. But a3 has become fashionable again. <laughs> it's a very old move, of course. So white wants to claim those two bishops. And black can argue that, well, you know, white's pawns, they potentially there are some sort of nice holes around here and and black has gained time through that exchange. So with c5, black starts the process of trying to look for weaknesses down the c-file. Knight e2. So that means that this is important for later on. The f-pawn isn't blocked. That's why it goes to e2 and not to the traditional f3. Queen c7, right. So we can see straight away a little bit of pressure down the c-file. So that's why the bishop has to drop. Can go back to a2, but comes back to d3. Does look like a beautiful diagonal. Knight c6. Castles, good, straightforward development. e5, right. Typical of the Nimzo. So black is attacking white's strong point on d4. And if white were to exchange off, then you can see, well, let me show you, for example, like this, not a good move. Then this exposes the bishop, you know, this pawn is left isolated. Black looks good. So after e5, it's very important that white just holds the tension here. So that's why knight g3 was played. And that starts to look at some nice squares in the position as well. Once that pawn has come to e5, you can see f5 is a bit weaker. Now, if this is taken here, then this starts to open up the position for the bishop. So uh, rook d8 is a, is a more prudent move. And if you look at your database here, you'll see a lot of games by um, Sarana, Alexei Sarana. And he's specialised in the move f4. It's an interesting idea basically after this exchange now you don't take here that would expose the bishop but you play e4 and you can see that this pawn is like a stopper in the position it's like a cork in a bottle and that just plugs those pieces but these pawns are mobile and dangerous so it's, it's another way of playing it's interesting but I'm sure that Divya was aware of that and she actually plays a move which is recommended by the latest versions of stockfish so it seems to me she'd done her homework well and this move is logical because it clears away the, the knight on f6 you know an important defender of black's king so an exchange on h5 and something nasty threatened here. So h6. Now, next move, very important. It would be nice to go for f4 again. But there's a problem with that move. Let's just take a look. White has to be very switched on here. So pawn takes here, and now here's the trick. Knight takes pawn on d4, nasty. If pawn takes, then queen c3, double attack. So black will get the piece back and has, you know, broken white's position. 
Let's go back. So in this position, rook b1 played. So it's clear that the rook isn't really going to achieve much on the b file, but it's just about stepping away from that diagonal so that black doesn't have tricks anymore. So b6, and now f4 is possible because there's no longer the trick with the, the queen coming down to c3. And as before, if so this is very similar to Sorana's idea, if pawn takes, e takes d4 and e4, this is the big idea. So white sacks a pawn, this pawn is like a stopper, blocks out black's pieces, and then this pawn duo is ready to, to launch into the position, into into the, the king side, and you know, watch this bishop as well. And there's a nice, pa nice path for the rook to come to the third rank. Lovely attacking position. Therefore, Santos played pawn takes pawn on f4. Something had to be done. But rook takes f4. So now this rook comes into the game. And who knows, might switch to the g file or the h file. Bishop b6. Well, that's solid enough. Um, yeah, it's nice that it's protected. And black perhaps is looking to play rook d5. This, this can get tricky. So that's why Divya played bishop e4, stopping rook d5. Queen d7. So that's looking at some light squares in the position. So d5 is covered. There's no d5 now. And bishop b2. So, I mean, this bishop does not look like a great piece on b2 blocked by these pawns but just wait it's also simply important that this queen's rook joins its partner in crime over on the king's side so the, the threat is just to swing the rook over really and that's why bishop c4 was played well it's, it's a good move anyway to block this pawn ensuring that this bishop isn't going to get into the game maybe so the queen came back to f3, attacking the knight, which dragged the rook to c8 to defend the knight, and bishop f5. So because of the skewer here, then the bishop came back. So that was exchanged, and then the rook came to f1. So Divya has been able to coordinate the rooks beautifully, Nice tripling on the f file, which basically means that uh, black has to do something about that and shuts the f file with f6. But the rooks look good. Queen g3, and, and now white has more freedom to play on the king side. Queen g3, obviously, there's now a pin, so rook takes f6 threatened, so that's why the king came to h7. And rook g4, now that there's no longer a bishop there, then the rook can happily switch over. Rook takes g7 threatened. So things are starting to build very nicely on the king side. I mean, I like the way that, um, you know, white's pieces... Basically, this has been white's plan the whole way to organise this attack on the king. And finally, she's getting there. Rook g4. I say finally, we're only at move 25 actually. Queen f7. But it, there are some tricky moves to, to get this far. c4. That bishop can now smile across the board looking at the king's side. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. So everything is coming together. This is This is a very good outcome from the opening. Coordinated piece, coordinated major pieces attacking on the king's side, and the queen's bishop is striking across the board. Knight b8. Some regrouping from black. d5. So that opens up the bishop. And there are serious threats on the king's side. So that's why knight d7 was played. That accounts for this little spin from the knight so that. The pawn on f6 is supported again. 
Now, how does white make progress? It seems like, you know, black has shut things out. But nice little switch. Queen d3, check. King steps back. And rook g6, progress. So there's more pressure here on the king side. Okay, I'm going to stop for a moment and let you do some work. So it's black to play. Black to play. What would you do if you were black? Calculation is important, not just in attacking, but in defense as well. So how can black best defend in this position? Cheers, folks. Black to play. Queen f8 is the move. It's a bit passive, but actually it's all about defending that pawn so that if white is going to sacrifice here, then that pawn is defended by the queen. And basically black, I mean, I, I could go into detail, but black is probably just about holding that position. Not easy. But instead, Santos played a very natural move, rook e8, looking to get some counterplay here. And now bishop takes, crashing in. Knight takes, rook takes. Well, if queen takes, then this should be winning for white. The queen clears up, basically. So pawn takes. Rook takes pawn check, king g8. So white is a whole rook down. So you've got to get it right. So what did Divya do next? Nice little shuffle here. Queen g3 check. So if the queen steps in the way, then the queen is lost after rook, rook g6. So king f8 forced. And queen h4. Very good. Threatening... Rook takes f6. And black still has a little chance to hang on here. Best move is rook takes. And this is the best sequence, basically. Uh, queen here with, with some counterplay. But, well, after this... White has very good winning chances in that position because the d-pawn is very strong but in the meantime you know white can threaten on the king side as well and the king is safe but instead of that b5 played that's too much it's possible to take on f6 but divya plays better d6 so that just takes away the e7 square so that this check is now going to be fatal. Queen g7 played, rook check, king up, queen h5 check. So if queen g6, then rook h7. So king e6, an exchange. And this is very nice. Do you take the rook? You do not take the rook. White to play and win. Can you spot it? Very neat finish. Queen d5 check. Black resigned because king d7. Queen b7 picks up the queen. Beautiful game. What I love about that is that uh, Divya's play was so direct. You know, right from the word go, white has the intention to attack on the king side. Now, it takes some clever maneuvering to get there but in the end you know once this position was achieved then this is serious and little by little crept in uh, until this was a very nice sacrifice to uh, disturb black's king position and yeah polish things off at the end beautiful stuff so congratulations on that game to divya deshmukh excellent stuff
Hope you've enjoyed my coverage of the Tata Steel tournament. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.